Hi, and welcome to another edition of Preservation Workshop, or How to Be Your Own Curator at Home. I'm Sue Taylor, Chief Curator for the New Mexico Museum of Space History. And today's topic is going to be using antiques. Before we go any further, I'd like to share with you a little video of something where there is a house here in our country where antiques are used on a daily basis. A tour of the White House with Mrs. John F. Kennedy. Mrs. Kennedy, I want to thank you for letting us uh, visit your official home. This is obviously the room from which much of your work on it is directed. Yes, it's attic and cellar all in one. She prepared assiduously for the day of shooting. The shooting took seven hours. There were eight cameras. The producer, Perry Wolf, was amused that between takes, she smoked almost nonstop, and he saw that every time she smoked, she, she took her cigarette and she dumped the ash on the beautiful tapestry bench that she was sitting on. But she performed impeccably. Mrs. Kennedy, do you spend a great deal of time in the Lincoln Room? We did in the beginning. It was where we lived when we first came here, when our rooms at the other end of the hall were being painted. I loved living in this room. It's on the sunny side of the house and one of Andrew Jackson's magnolia trees is right outside the window. Well, maybe you don't live in the White House, and maybe you're not Jackie Kennedy, and maybe you don't have antiques that date back to the time of Andrew Jackson, or maybe you do. Anyway, if you do, that's what this program is about. We've had many other discussions about how to care for your antiques, how to preserve them. But we haven't yet discussed using those antiques, and that's what we're going to do today. You can use your antiques. You're not going to destroy them unless you're really rough with them. But kitchen utensils, tools, let's talk about some of the antiques that you may have in your house that you should not be afraid to use. We're going to do a tour of your house, starting with the bedroom. I'm sure many of you may have an old bronze bed like this that you either inherited or bought at an antique store. You bought it to use, right? Or perhaps you have a bed like this for your colonial themed house. You may have replaced the rope tension supports with a box spring, but it still serves the same purpose it did 200 years ago. Maybe you have a guest bedroom and have furnished it with twin beds like these from 1925. Quite nice and quite usable. Just don't have the grandkids jump up and down on them. How many of you may have inherited a vanity like this one for the 1940s? Or like this 1940s waterfall vanity? If you have either, I'm sure you use it. Or perhaps you live in an old house that still has its original bathroom fixtures like this. If you've been using them, keep it up. Just take care of that porcelain. Let's move on to the dining room. This is a dining set from the 1960s, which I'm sure many of you have and use. Maybe you were lucky enough to inherit your grandmom's dining suite. If so, don't be afraid to use it. You'll make your grandmom proud. Or perhaps you have a different dining set from the 1950s that you are using. Let's not forget buffets. This one dates to the 1940s and is still used. A more recent buffet is this one from the 1960s that, again, many of you may have. It's more recent, but still an antique. Another style of buffet still commonly used in many households that inherited one from their family. Instead of a buffet, you may have a sideboard like this. If any of you are like my mother-in-law, you probably have one like this covered with a lace runner and filled with pictures, souvenir cups and saucers and other knickknacks. Don't be ashamed. It's a wonderful use for a sideboard. How about a china cabinet? 
It's one way to show off that old china that is used only once or twice a year. This will keep it from gathering dust. Another china cabinet from the 1960s is probably very like the one many of you have. And here's some of that old china. This set dates to the 1920s and is from Czechoslovakia. A lot of you may have remembered collecting these in the grocery stores back in the 1960s when you went shopping with your mom. You still have it and still use it. Just don't put it in the dishwasher and your kids and grandkids can still use it into the future. More commonly seen and used is Fiesta Wear. It started in the late 40s and is still around today. Of course, it's changed over time. At the end of the program, I will talk about Fiesta Wear that you may have inherited from your grandmother. You're going to find out something that I bet you didn't know. Let's move on to the family silverware. If you have a set like this or this, you again probably only use it on special occasions. Try to use it more. The more you use it, the less you have to polish it. Trust me, I know. Let's not forget the kitchen. You may have old kitchen utensils like these you inherited from your great grandmom, or maybe you bought at an antique store. Can you still use them? Most certainly. The bone-handled forks and knives and pewter spoons you don't want to put in the dishwasher. Here are some kitchen utensils from the 1950s that you may have lying around. Or maybe some like these. If they are badly rusted, you can purchase a special rust remover from places like Gaylord Online that will help you safely remove the rust and make them usable again. How about an apple peeler from the 19th century like this? I worked at a museum where we used all the antique cooking tools like cast iron, waffle irons, and an apple peeler like this. Tools like to be used and if you are careful will remain useful for many years. Besides, you know that they don't make things like this anymore. This is an old chopper and grinder from the 1950s. I still have my mom's and I use it for chopping works like a dream. If you are lucky enough to have a large kitchen, then you probably have an old kitchen work table like this. Or this Formica one from the 1950s. These tables are great for assembling your ingredients or for rolling out dough. I know. How many of you still do that today? Maybe a lot more since the quarantine. It gives you something to do. Here's an old 1920s swing arm toaster. Another toaster that's common is this 1930s flopper. More likely, you still have a toaster like this one from the 1940s. Unless the heating coils have completely given out, all you usually have to do is replace the electric cord and they are good as new. They also toast better than current ones. My mother-in-law still used the one that she got when she married my father-in-law in the late 40s. One last kitchen item is this 1950s Formica breakfast room table and chair set. Still usable and functional. How about lighting? Maybe you have an old oil lamp like this, again inherited. Or perhaps one like this. If you haven't been using it, you should. You might have an old slag glass electric lamp like this one or a 1950s Moss electric lamp that you either bought or inherited. Or how about an old student electric lamp? These are still usable. Just replace the electric cord if the original is frayed and you have a working lamp. And yes, they can be fitted for the new LED bulbs. A lot of you might remember that Tom Hanks played Jim Lovell in the movie Apollo 13. Did you know he is also an avid old typewriter collector? He's been trying to get people to not throw them out and maybe start using them. He even created an app for your phone to get the key sounds of an old typewriter for your keypad. How cool is that? This is an old L.C. Smith from 1926. Here's a Royal from 1936. And an Olympia manual from the 1960s. If you have one, use it. It'll give your fingers good exercise. On to the garage. How many of you guys out there have inherited your dad's or granddad's tools? 
Maybe you have tools that look like this. Or old wrenches. If you do, please use them. If rusted, use a rust remover and rust inhibitor from Gaylord Archival. You'll make your pops happy. And since it's summer, you may have an old fan like this at your summer cottage. Don't be afraid to use it. Just replace the electric cord and voila, you have cool air. Or at least moving air. I could go on and on, but I think that by now, you've got the idea. You will remember in one of the pictures, there was a grouping of Fiesta wear, and I think a lot of you may have some of that. If you have any of the really old orange or red Fiesta wear from the late 1940s up until about the early 1970s, you really don't want to use that. This is a Geiger counter. I'm going to show you why you should not be using this orange Fiesta wear. I hope you can hear that. That is close to being off the scale. The problem with that Fiesta wear is that they used uranium salt in part to get the color that they wanted in their pottery. That's why you don't want to use it. Every time you scrape that plate with a knife or a fork, guess what you are ingesting? Uranium. Other than that, I hope you got a pretty good idea of the type of antiques that you can be using in your very own home. And you don't have to worry about destroying them unless, as I said at the beginning, you're really, really rough on them. I hope you enjoyed this part of Preservation Workshops or How to Be Your Own Curator at Home. Please join me, Sue Taylor, for other videos on our museum's YouTube page. You can also reach me at sue.taylor at state.nm.us. Stay safe, stay at home, and now that it's summer, stay cool.